I received a comment asking for a render test for an arch first interior scene for global illumination and reflections, which wasn't quite visible in my last test. So I downloaded this modern restaurant project from Epic Marketplace, which is free for this month. I believe this project was built in UE4, so I rebuilt a part of the scene for testing with sky atmosphere and enabling various ray tracing settings. I initially tested some various settings in deferred rendering, which is the default rendering method. However, I could not get reflections and translucency looking quite right this way. It might be that there is something in the ray tracing settings I was doing wrong, or it could be that UE5 isn't quite there with translucency and refractions yet. So since this is an archverse scene anyway, I opted to do the tests with path tracing, which was in UE4 already, but new in UE5 in the latest preview version. Because path tracing works quite well out of the box without too much tweaking, there was only a couple of C bars I could test. I searched and read through all the C bars related to path tracing, but there wasn't any I found that looked like it could use testing. Let me know in the comments if you know any C bars that I should have tested. I will leave the list of what I tested in the description. So set 1 is no console variables and set 2 is r.temporal AA current frame rate 0.5 and set 3 r.motion blur separable at 1 and set 4 is 2 and 3 combined and I'll show you the non-path trace example as well. In the post process volume you can now find path tracing settings search path tracing and these were my path tracing settings for this render test so 15 max bounces 500 samples per pixel and filter width at one emissive materials checked and max path exposure at 30 and so in the camera for the sequence my aperture was at f8 so so i did not turn this on but if you have translucent materials and have shallow depths of field you might want to turn this on and denoiser was off i'll show you the rendering setting in the movie render queue when you want to render with path tracing basically you swap out the default deferred rendering with path tracing in the drop down menu. So I had EXR sequence and path tracer as the rendering method and camera frame close and game overrides and the settings as default and output resolution 3840 by 2160 UHD. The anti-aliasing sample count I used was 32 spatial and 16 temporal which equals 512 samples per frame. I used a lot of samples because I was only test rendering three or four frames for each set. But I'm pretty sure this is overkill and you probably could get away with way less sample counts in a scene like this. So I also had a OCIO config enabled. So outputting an ASUS color space. If you want to know about how to render with pass tracing, and also about how to use OCIO profiles for better dynamic range, check out William Forsh's tutorials on those topics. So here I have the results in Photoshop. I'll actually show you the deferred rendering one first, the non-path trace example. As you can see, the glass is too dark for some reason. If I decrease the number of refraction rays in the ray tracing translucency setting, I could make it more clear, but then the reflections didn't work properly. In the end, I gave up trying to make this work in UE5, and also I was getting some artifacts like here as well. So this is set 1 with pass tracing which is, in my opinion, looks a ton better than the normal rendering method. I don't think there's much to fault in this image. This first set is not using any C bars. And then here is set two, and here is set three, and here is set four. The reason I skipped over the other sets so quickly was that there was no difference. 
I will set the layer blending mode to difference to make sure and show you again. So layer two to difference. And as you can see, there's nothing. And if it's all black, it just means there's no difference. It's exactly the same image. And same with this one, all black. Maybe a smission of white there. And the highlights. And then set four. That's same story, all black except for that highlight. I'm suspecting this is because I was using path tracing and there was no motion in the scene. But I think I can safely conclude you probably don't need to use any CVARs related to rendering in the movie render queue going forward in UE5. The only thing I haven't really tested is motion blur with this test, but motion blur is mostly accounted for when you choose temporal sample counts in the anti-aliasing settings anyway. So the takeaway points I got from this was translucency and path tracing works in UE5 now and it looks pretty good. If you have translucent materials and refraction happening in the scene, use path tracing for rendering. It just makes things way easier. But path tracing has a lot of limitations. It's not suitable for a scene that has a lot of animations or visual effects. It also usually takes longer to render. When you can't use path tracing and you have translucency in your scene, it might be better to just stick with UE4 for now. If you found this video useful, please leave a like, comment and maybe subscribe. Thank you for watching.